decided to strike out on your own. So I watch, I'm watching everybody, all these other people making companies, and I'm watching them get funded, and I'm like, shit, I can do that. Right? And that's what happened. So I so then I, I left Phillips and and I go I'm gonna write a business plan and then start to create a next generation you know company and it was all about we were trying to build the Dell of consumer electronics so what was consumer because I learned that in retail like there was an analog to digital transition HDTV was coming uh, there was no LCD screens yet but there was DVDs were there and we were like wait a second. People have to, if they want to put a home theater together, they have to pick the right screen, the right speakers, the right you know, amps, and the right things, and they need all the right cables, and it was really confusing and hard. You had to be a real geek to put together a home theater. So I was like, well, you saw what Dell did with PCs to make it easy, so we're gonna make the Dell of Consumer Electronics, and we're gonna make a slim box that was gonna be, you put your CDs in, it would rip the CDs, and then put them on a hard drive. So Samsung was gonna supply the other components. We were gonna make an online store where you could select different things and we were gonna have one thing that differentiated, which was this hard drive, rack mount, MP3 player. But before it happens, you get a call. Not before it happens. Oh, it was that you got into the market? No, well, so before we shipped it, yes. Yeah. But we had built it. Yeah. And then, we, then 2000 happened, right? The internet blew up. Hardware companies? They weren't funding even software companies in 2000, right? It was like, geez, they were, everyone's holding on for dear life, right? Because they're everyone's bleeding cat. Hardware companies, they don't want anything to do with it, right? And they're like, Tony, you're crazy, go software, what's this? And so, so then I couldn't get any more money, and so I get a call from Apple saying, would you consult for us, we need a project done. And I was like, shit, I, this is a way to get money for the startup, so I'll go and moonlight on that to fund it. And that, turned out ultimately yeah. that became the iPod. Yeah. And, um, but before I go all the way forward, um, how come you didn't, a bunch of GM people, general magic people, went with Steve Perlman to Web TV. Web TV. Did you ever think about going in that direction? They did Web TV after I started Phillips. I see. So you're too early. Yeah, yeah I was already, I was already yeah. into the, into my next thing. Okay. So, um, talk a little, a little, let me ask you about the dial. On, on the, uh, oh, the iPod. click wheel, the, the click wheel. wheel. Yeah, was that part of your original design? Well, you can see it here. Yeah. So this was the this was the original. This is the picture of the original styrofoam model that I made. That was weighted and everything that Steve picked up, and that was the that was the pitch. So you had six. How how quickly did you do that? What? How quickly did I you? I did that all in six weeks. Six to seven weeks. Everything I put because I had to get back to the startup. My start, so it was like, how fast can I, how fast can I make this to get my money so I can get back to work? <laughs> and he liked it. I mean, it wasn't one of those. Oh, it was, uh, it was, it was a green lighted. Not was green lighted, maybe not to ship, but it's green lighted to go to the next phase yeah. as quickly as possible to see if, if, how real this styrofoam thing was. Because I had, I had literally made all this, the components inside. I, I made all the Lego blocks that were inside this, and you could see how they were pieced together. So I had that um, along with some other models, the ones that were thrown out because they weren't the right design. And where did that capacitive dial idea come from? Well, it wasn't capacitive, it was a mechanical wheel first. What's really, I forgot that. Okay. It was mechanical first, and then because we had so many failures in the field and stuff, it went to a capacitive wheel. Um, so where did it come from? Truth be told. Now it's so many years later. So this is, this is what Phil Schiller did because he was such a fan of Bang & Olufsen. <laughs> they had, it was a Bayo phone, blah, blah, 3000 or something. And it had a wheel on it, just one wheel to select names from a, from a, you know, from a list. And that was the thing, he's like, so I had this thing, and I was like, main control input, and I thought it was just gonna be a up, down, left, right. And then he goes, and then, you know, we do all this, and Steve's like, I love it, we're gonna do this thing and everything, and then, but, we gotta, we gotta talk about one more thing. And I wasn't an employee at the time, right? I was just a contractor. And then Phil turns to Steve and says, can we bring out this thing? And Steve goes, yeah, you can show him. So Phil runs into Steve's office, grabs the phone, and brings it back to the bail column, or bail phone, whatever it was. And he goes, this! And they go, can you put that on there? I'm like, 
Oh, I know how that works. Sure, I can put that on there. No problem. And they go, so, let's go. And I go, wait a second, I gotta, saw, I gotta start up. I don't know if I'm joining you. I got other things. You know, you guys can go do this thing. Because remember, Apple wasn't an $800 billion valuation company like it is today. It was break even, and still 500 million in debt, 150 million in the bank. You're like, less than 1% market share in the US only. You're like, are you gonna go join this thing? Right? So, so then there's the moment in this room, which has been widely chronicled, where they put you on the spot. They, oh, they, that was afterwards. But that was where you made your, was that literally where you made your decision? Yes, that was literally when I made my decision. So who was it? It was Rubenstein, who basically sort Well, of, we, gotta, we gotta tell the story, right? We can't just, you, you gotta, okay. you might have heard the story, but you gotta, they gotta tell the whole story. So I was really not sold to go to this computer company that wasn't doing so well. <laughs> um, my, not my, my startup was doing so well, but, uh, but you know, why do I always gonna commit to that? And so I said, and we had negotiated for like four weeks now, and John and Steve and everyone's getting pissed at me because I'm like, no, I, this isn't right yet. I said, this is not what I want. And so they started to get closer to what I want, but not enough. But I go, look, I want to start meeting all the people who I would be working with. So Phil Schiller, da, 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 da. so I want to meet these people. So they set up a day where I went and met with all kinds of different people around the company for a half an hour to get to know who I'd be working with. And the last person was Steve, right, to sit down and, and do a one-on-one. -on -one. So, da, 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 and then I'm with Steve. So it's going well, and then Steve's like, and I'm like, Steve, look, I learned from Phillips, you know, if we have enough time and money, we can make anything, but how are you going to sell? Like, Sony's number one in every single auto, audio category, how are you going to sell this thing? Like, I'm not gonna waste all my time. And he's like, look, if you can make this, I'm gonna put every dollar of Apple marketing behind it. I'm gonna stop marketing for the Mac for a little while, and we're gonna put all of it behind it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm looking at my watch, and I'm running late, because I'm supposed to go to another meeting where I'm going to unveil this project to Johnny Ive and all of these, uh, jo Greg Joswick and all these other people, there was 35 people waiting. But I got Steve, so I'm gonna keep going. So I'm, we're like getting this and stuff, and so I'm late, I'm like 30 minutes late. I show up to the room, <sighs> all these people look at me, they don't know who I am. They're like, who is this? And they all stare at me, you know, mad because they're sitting there waiting. And John opened, uh, looks at me and he goes, are you gonna take the job now? And I look, and there's these, all these people I don't know anything about. And I'm like, huh? He's like, you need to sign on the bottom line right now on the job, or we're gonna cancel this meeting, and it's over. And I was like, what? So I turn to the room, and they, they say, and I go, is this how you guys hire everybody in Apple? <laughs> and it was a nervous laughter. They don't know what the hell's going on either. And I look at John, and I like, I can go, give me what I want. Or I was like, I'll say yes, and I'll fix it later. So I just looked at him and I had a deep, like. <laughs> and I went, okay, I'm in. <laughs> Within a nanosecond after doing that, shaking his hand, I fell into complete shock. I was like, bah. And I sat down, and I couldn't give the presentation. <laughs> All the slides and everything. And back then we were on like transparencies. Like transparency <laughs> on a freaking like back then. As a, and so for 20 minutes I couldn't put two and two together. So other people were helping, but I couldn't. And so needless to say, that was that was how I got going. How hard was it to unwind your, your how hard was it to get out of fuse? Were there venture backers or what was it? Or? It because we were so close to the edge, it was not hard. And then I was able to pull a lot of people over because I couldn't hire from other people, other teams inside of Apple, because though they were already strapped, we, I could take just a few people or a bunch of people from Hughes, that was the beginning of the team when we added other people around the edges and stuff. So, so I, I, I want to get to the iPhone, but one last iPod question. So how much of um, 
iPod was a success, but how much of the real sort of um, the, the real success of iPod was I, the, the combination of iTunes and iPod? Oh, the whole the whole experience was designed so that you did all the difficult stuff on the computer where you had all the right from the start. From the start. Really? You did all your organization, all your yeah. playlist management, all your ripping. You did everything over there, and then you just transferred, and it was only a consumption experience over there. You only consumed. You did all your other stuff did, over did, there. Did, did iTunes come afterwards? No, iTunes was first. iTunes was first. People were ripping CDs and then burning CDs. And then there was MP3 players, and then people were trying to get music onto them, and they were just in the there was Diamond Rio and stuff, and the, the experience was so horrible, that's when they called me up and said, we think there's a better way. So who coined the, the marketing phrase, a thousand songs in your pocket? You know, that is the, I think the best marketing tagline we've ever heard, in the fewest words ever, to communicate what it was. And that was um, the agency. The agency and shot it. So uh, you got a huge success, but there's this, the, 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 on the horizon, there's this It wasn't that much of a success the first two years. The but first quarter went to all the Mac loyalists. And then at that, no one bought it. Because it only worked with a Mac. So how many, okay. right? It didn't work with PCs. And no, Steve no. hoped that people were gonna buy Macs to buy iPods. It's like, <laughs> Steve, how much does an iPod cost? It goes three ninety nine. go, no! Three ninety nine plus 2,000 bucks. Yeah. Right, and so that then we finally, you know, Walt Mo the old Wasp Mo Mo Mossberg story, and yeah. and we shifted on the PC. But ultimately, ultimately, smartphones or or, or whatever feature phones, feature phones, feature phones. They're, they're a potential threat to your business. They were an existential threat. Yeah. So is, is that what led directly to the iPhone? Well, it led to, to the Motorola Rocker. Oh yeah. So you might remember the the old thing, Motorola had, Rocker, yeah. which was a disaster. Yeah. Steve hated it. He, like, he didn't even want to demo it on stage. It was so bad. Um, and that was when we got absolute religion that we are going to build our own thing. And it was going, not going to be a phone with software. It was going to be a computer with a phone. And two prototype sort of paths started, P1 and P2? No, no. There was, there was first the iPod phone. So that, but didn't that become P1? No. No. There was the iPod phone. So imagine the iPod as a phone, and you would dial a number with that, right? Hi. But you could never make that work. You could we couldn't, it was just a rotary phone. It was like when, you know, Alexander Graham Bell, you know. <laughs> like when I grew up, like, but you know. Everybody knew how to use it, all the old people knew how to use it. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, it wasn't quite the, a great experience. But we tried like 30, 40 different ways to make that thing a phone, and it didn't work. And then we, we built P1, and then we threw that away, and then we made P2. And P1 had also the, the circular model? No, P1 was actually a full, what you would have considered uh, an iPhone today. But not multi-touch? No, it had multi-touch. The thing is, it was in a iPod mini case. So if you see that iPod, the blue iPod, that was what it was, was designed. So it was rounded along the edges, you'd insert it through, and it was this thing. But because of the, the aluminum structure, we couldn't get any signal. Because you couldn't get any antennas to work, right? So we built this whole thing, and then we became this like Frankenstein because we had to have all these big plastic caps on it. The design was horrible. Like we just, we were all newbies at designing the, you know, kind of a cell phone plus computer. So we threw it all away and said, okay, what would we have done differently? And like, okay, and then that's where like, let's make it easy, do a plastic back, and da 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 to make the iPhone happen. So one of the puzzling aspects of Isaacson's book on jobs is he puts two stories uh, forward uh, uh, to explain uh, multi-touch. Um, one story has uh, Steve going to dinner with Bill Gates. And uh, let's see, there's a guy who sort of describes how you have a tablet of the future with a stylus. So, so what happened was, this was, so Lorene had a, Friend, her, her girlfriend had a husband, and they came over to dinner to Steve's house, because Steve would tell us the story all the time. And they came over, and this guy was annoying to Steve, okay? And he would always tell Steve, like, what they were doing in Microsoft, like, pen windows was it, and like, da-da-da-da-da, and he was so annoyed by it, he was like, 
I'm gonna show them how to goddamn do it right. I'm sick and tired of this guy. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Microsoft doing this thing. We're gonna do it the right way and it's gonna have no styles. <laughs> right? So that was the first thing where like stylus was not allowed. And I have a follow-on story to that. One other day. But no stylus is allowed, you're gonna do everything with your finger. Because you don't need this is this is your stylus. And everything's gotta fit within your fingertips. He didn't know about multi-touch. This was just a No, he didn't know about multi-touch. Did not know about multi-touch. Ultimately, you found a company that had multi-touch technology, and you grabbed them. Yep, a tiny little little company that had multi-touch, yeah, capacity multi-touch. But there was a group within Apple who didn't buy in for a long time. They, they saw the BlackBerry experience, and they liked the keyboard, without naming names. That's right. Well, look, it was the hottest thing selling, right? This little company in Canada all of a sudden was, you know, had all the profit, you know, in the cell phone business, had the most valuable customers, had a service, you know, for the email service. Like, it was the thing to be. It was, it was a phenomenon, right? So how could you go cut against the grain when people were like, it was called Crackberry for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but so here you're, you're designing a competitor. When did you become sure of the idea of multi-touch as being a workable, how long did it take you to believe? It took about five months. Because you know you start with a ping pong size multi touch display, it was literally a ping pong table that was a projector projected a Mac and all the chips and all that stuff were around it to make it work. So you had to figure out if you could make a small touch screen. Then you had to figure out if you could make a keyboard, virtual keyboard, and then all the details to make the virtual keyboard actually work good enough to get things done. So you had this whole list of all these risks, and then we'd have to like every week march and march and march to get confident to then just say we're jettisoning that and we're going to go this way so all kinds of software mock-ups software only mock-ups hardware mock-ups making hardware starting to work doing touch screens that weren't multi-touch but single touch just to get the experience so it was all of this all of these crazy prototype things because we didn't have that to make it so you had to did you get kind of you know do a couple things and then use your imagination to see if it was gonna. Did, did you go. feel like the clock was ticking? Did I know the clock? Well, well did, you know, you're in a competitive industry. You're trying out a new technology. You spent six months on it. If it fails, if it doesn't work, you've wasted six months. Did you feel? Well, no. We did the iPod phone and we threw it away too. So the clock was always ticking, but it was ticking to find a solution, not to just settle, right? Like we had to ship something. That's what most companies do. Oh, just ship whatever because we have to do that. No, we shipped the right thing. That's why it took three different versions to actually, for the one to ship, the right one to ship. The other thing that's always puzzled me, I mean, there is, you know, you were competing against this Wintel world that traditionally had separated hardware and software and did them as separate things. And, you know, Apple's advantage was always the single unified experience. But inside, you had a design team, you had a hardware team, you had a software ID team. team, we had antenna teams, we had all kinds of stuff, right? So, how did that, how did you make that work? 